How you doing YouTubers? Craig the Muskoka Painter here. And today, by request, I'm going to be doing some brush and roller cleaning. But we're going to put a twist on it, because we're on site here, and we don't have running water. So I'm going to show you how to do it with a few buckets of water, so you'll be ready for the next day. So we'll just talk a little bit about the tools we're going to use to clean up our brush and our roller tonight. We're going to use a brush, comb, and roller cleaner combo. You'll notice this curved part that belongs to the combination tool as well and that's what it's used for cleaning out your roller. And this of course is the brush comb and I'll be showing you how to use that. Next is the wire brush. It's not very pretty but it does a nice job of getting the paint out of the bristles in your brush. And then last but not least the brush spin. And it's also a roller spinner. I'm going to be showing you how to use it to clean both your brush and your roller. So now we're going to start off cleaning our roller. Before we take it off the cage, we want to get the excess paint off. So we just put our cage on the edge of the bucket, the five gallon pail of paint, and we take our roller cleaner and start to work out the excess paint out of the roller into the bucket like so you probably notice that we're using quite a heavy shaggy roller because we we're actually just painting a ceiling we want to get a good layer of product on there now a common mistake that people make is they go with the 3 8 inch nap rollers which is the most commonly sold. They usually sold a bunch of them in an economy pack. So now that you've got the worst of the paint out with the roller scraper, you're ready to move on to the next section. So now you want to have two or three five gallon buckets of water handy. Now if you don't have running water you may have to bring this in or if you're in a rural area like us you can get the water from a lake or a river. Anything that's handy but as long as it's clean and fresh. So now we want to dip the roller sleeve on the cage right into the first bucket of water. Get it soft and wet. Take off the excess. Do the same thing again as we did with our paint into the paint can. And get rid of the majority of that paint that's still left in there. Then we move right along to our second bucket. We'll do the exact same thing. Shake off the excess water. Use the roller scraper. Take the majority of that paint that might be left in there now. So you might say this is a lot of fuss for a roller sleeve, maybe I'm better off just throwing it away. Well, if you're using these thicker rollers as I suggested, they come at a premium and they can be used time and time again just like a good brush. If you look after your roller sleeves, they will last quite a long time. Now we're at the final stage, we're ready to remove the roller sleeve off the cage, pull it off like so, and then you insert the roller spinner into 
the sleeve like so. And you can pull it out. So those were the basic steps for cleaning roller sleeves. And of course if you had running water, you would just hold the sleeve under the running water as you were cleaning them. And then you wouldn't have to store them in a plastic bag. You could let them dry. And when they're dried off, you can rub them in your hand, get, fluff them up again, ready for use another time. And then last but not least, you want to wipe off your roller cage. Now the paint that's left on there is nice and wet, so you just take a rag and you wipe those off. Now a lot of people won't take the time to do this, but this is where you can run into problems. The paint builds up on these tools in these little crevices like this. They can end up dropping off onto your, into your paint job and can really ruin your day. So make sure that you take the time and wipe off your roller cage thoroughly. And then it too will be ready to go to work the next day or whenever you're ready to go. So now it's time to clean our brush. And as you can see, we've been hammering it pretty hard today. Why do we say that? Look at the paint all the way down to the ferrule. That's pretty ugly. Then you'd want to flush this brush out just exactly the way I'm going to show you how we're going to clean it with our buckets of water. So we're going to get our hands dirty here a little bit. We're just going to dip our brush right in the water and use our thumbs and fingers to get off that excess paint off the ferrule. And we'll just work the brush into the water a little bit, get it nice and wet. You can see we've got the majority of the paint off the surface of the brush already. Now we're going to use our brush comb and we're going to insert right at the base of the brush. And you can see already that some paint has begun to build up at the base of the bristles and eventually that will ruin your brush. So we want to stay on top of our brush cleaning so that this doesn't happen. So you can see that as you work the brush comb in to the base of the bristles and take it right out to the end, you can see how it's cleaning up quite nicely already. So it might be quite tempting to just load up the brush with paint, wrap it in plastic. Maybe you've seen that done before, maybe you've been tempted to do that or that's your habit. Unfortunately, I've seen co-workers do this and it really starts to do a lot of damage to your brush really quickly. You notice I can hardly get my brush comb at the base of the bristles in this brush. And that's a, a sign that, uh, an early sign that the brush is on the way out. And we don't want to speed up that damage process by neglecting our brushes. We want to flush them out regularly, clean them every night. Now we move to our second station, and this is where we use our wire brush. So again, you want to dip the brush into the water, and it should be somewhat cleaner than the first station. And just get that brush loaded up again. And again, we want to work from the base of the brush, the top of the ferrule, the metal part there, to the base of those bristles, you want to get right in there, and then brush right down, right to the end of the hairs. Like so. You can also work a little bit on the ferrule, clean up that rough stuff, and again, it's like the roller. If we leave paint residue on our ferrule, it could end up getting into our bristles and giving us problems when we're trying to do a nice finished job with the paint in the future. Now we're at our last stage and we're using our brush roller spinner again. We want to insert our brush handle into the spinner, like so. 
Make sure it's nice and secure. Place it in the bucket, within the walls of the bucket. It should look something like so. So again, our brush isn't perfectly clean, but it's a lot cleaner than when it started out. And it'll be ready for us to use in the morning. There's one more step you can do to ensure that they don't dry out and give us problems. And that is to place it in a plastic bag, a piece of plastic. Not too tight, we don't want it to lose its shape. So just make sure the air can't get to it. And then we want to lay it flat on the ground or in our toolbox so it doesn't lose shape and it'll be ready to go in the morning. So I hope you found this video informative. It was in response to your questions and comments. So I hope it helps you and your friends or your colleagues in your future projects. So don't forget to subscribe and by all means leave more questions or comments regarding these videos. And remember it's Craig and the Skoka Painter helping you take the paint out of painting.